WandaVision llegó a su final y antes de que empecemos a hablar de la próxima serie de Marvel de, de Falcon and the Winter Soldier, pude conversar con uno de los protagonistas, con uno de los actores que fue parte de este universo en todos los capítulos de la serie. Fue uno de los ciudadanos atrapados por los poderes de Wanda. Conversamos sobre cómo fue trabajar en esta producción, qué significó para él, cómo es ver el detrás de escena en una mega producción de este estilo y también cómo fue la preparación que al parecer incluyó ver fragmentos de las distintas comedias que homenajearon o parodiaron a lo largo de toda esta única temporada que parece que habrá de WandaVision. We now return to Mira Akien and Contre with our latest interview. It's the kind of thing that doesn't disappoint. You know, it's like when you when you're filming it, you think, oh, they're going to add that in post or uh, you know, they're going to do something to make that look like magic or superpowers or whatever they're going to do, you know. Um And when you're there, it's just like, it doesn't look as um, magical, right? You see, you see the strings and, uh, or you see nothing. Yeah. Uh, or or uh, even, I mean, I don't want to spoil it, but I'm about to, uh, me playing the piano. Yeah. That was a special effect. Yeah. Okay, spoiler alert to all the fans. <laughs> Everyone's asking me, do I play piano? I don't play piano, so they, They kind of, um, I don't know what they did, but they, they, they look great. We are an unusual couple, you know? Oh, I don't think that was ever in question. <laughs> Through my excitement, I just kind of figure out what I need to do to show up on the set and, and play the role that they want me to play. And the role that I was meant to play in this was, you know, pretty close to the person that I am, you know, Phil Jones, Harold Proctor, David Langell. The line is blurred right? Yeah. From all three. So it's pretty cool for me. I just showed up on set and I was chilling. Jones over there failed miserably. Isn't that right, Jones? The wife thought five courses would be sufficient. <laughs> As an actor, we, we get these jobs and, and you show up on set and then they, they air on TV or in the movies and, you know, you tell your friends and then it's over. You move on. You know, it's exciting and then it's done. But this was different because this really exploded yeah first of all i couldn't talk about it yeah right? i couldn't talk about it for almost a year and a half i i i had known that i was you know working on this project and um couldn't tell anyone couldn't post on social media i couldn't really do any of that stuff so so no one no one knew that i was on this show and and then when it premiered and people became so obsessed with it. And then there were articles written about me and memes on social media and, and tweets with my name from people I didn't know. And then it just, things went viral and. Well, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Whoops, you weren't supposed to see how we did that trick. <laughs> that was my grandmother's piano. The fans dug up these theories that, you know, I didn't even know about. Like, um, and, you know, who's to say what is going to happen? Because, you know, I'm, I'm just a, a, a cog in the wheel. But um, but someone dug up this uh, theory about Dottie being a witch and that witch was married to a character named Philip Jones. And then my name is Phil Jones. So am I that same guy? You know, that was very exciting. So I. Uh, I haven't gotten those comic books, but I'm interested in acquiring them because that's just kind of a memento connected to the character that I played, you know, whether or not, you know, I, like I said, I'm, I, I, I can't really speak on, you know, where it's going, but, uh, but it's, it's a cool theory and um, something that I, I didn't, I didn't know um, about the previous comics. If you had any other plans, you could, couldn't tell, but, I think this idea of being an actual character on the comics, like, give you hope, at least, to be a part again of, the, of this? Well, sure. I mean, the people of Westview just went through this whole experience, right? Yeah. And then, you know, I don't know, you know, I can talk about what happened on the show right at the end, right? So, um, you know, when, when she told Agatha that she had to stay in Westview, you know, she's going to be there. Right. And yeah. so the residents are there and who knows what's possible. You know, I was reading rumors about, you know, possible storylines and upcoming shows using characters from Westview. So um, 
I, I mean, if, if there's any chance of, of me, you know, popping up as Harold Proctor or Phil Jones in the future, that would be thrilling. I mean, I mean, I'm no fool. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm not turning that down. Deep in the dark, your kiss will bloom. Is this really happening? Like days of old. How was preparing that? Did you actually watch like half an hour of each of them? How was Yeah, that? we watched a complete episode. You know, I was very lucky to be included in that because um, it was mostly for the main cast and they invited me to sit at the table before they hired me. Um, so, so after I auditioned uh, for a few different characters, they invited me to, uh, to do some table work as a utility reader, you know, reading through the scripts. And as a part of that, we did the sitcom uh, boot camp. So we watched, we watched uh, Dick Van Dyke show and the Brady Bunch and Family Ties and and uh, Malcolm in the Middle and all these shows. So uh, just kind of to get a feel for you know, you know, one episode, the the way the show was, you know, because each episode really had a different uh, tone yeah. and energy and uh, you know related to the genre of the time. So. Uh, yeah, I, I was just lucky. I mean, call it whatever you want, but it, it worked out that I was in a situation where I, I was able to be a part of that on that side of the table. Um, and then, you know, for them to hire me in this role, which was just so such a it, it just fit with who I am. You know, I've done a lot of comedy uh, sitcom work, you know, in, in my uh, in my past. So uh, it. it it all kind of just matched up uh, for the show and for the kind of actor that I am. You look like a lot like David Schwimmer from Friends. So, I've heard this. <laughs> you're, you're like David Schwimmer in these guys. <laughs> sure. so, or or, or um, in, uh, in the version of him when he was in high school, he had a mustache. But did you discuss like doing something about friends uh, because of this or like this was- You know, uh, David Swimmer, Friends, Ross did not come up at all during production. Yeah. So yeah. I know that it's come up a lot since the show has aired. And yeah. in my personal life, it's been coming up since 1994. But it, on this show, I was not at all connected to yeah. Friends. It had nothing to do with that. So and and um, the the sitcoms that they were matching up with were more family oriented, yeah. Than um, than Friends. Friends was more of a young people singles, you know, yeah. show relationships and couples and friends, you know, that kind of thing. It's a sitcom starring two Avengers. It's a working theory. <laughs> Apron is a bit much, dear, but I am doing my best to blend it. I, I know that COVID did throw off the schedule and the order a little bit, but I, I really don't know the details of it. Um, we were very lucky because half of the shoot was in Atlanta and half of the shoot was in LA. And they, the timing of COVID was, I don't want to say convenient because that's not the right word. It was awful for the whole world. Yeah. But It's uh, the production wrapped the first week in March and COVID shut everything down the second week in March. So luckily that didn't affect the Atlanta leg of production. So the plan was to start up in LA like a month later, but by the end of March, you know, the whole world was shut down. Yeah. So, so we didn't start again till like late summer, early fall. And then we finished up in LA, but um, in terms of what changed, well, you know, I can only speak on what I what I know, you know, what what we had to do is just follow all these intense protocols, as I'm sure you're aware of, um, you know, on sets now, a uh, lot of testing, yeah. obviously mask wearing, social distance. I mean, this is nothing new at this point, but um, but yeah, so we just had to be careful of that, whether or not they changed choreography to uh, make it more safe. You know, I, I don't know, but yeah. um, but we got it done. It looks great. The, I mean, the, I mean yeah. the finale was, was really touching. I mean, really um, bittersweet, you know, very sad. Yeah. Uh, sad to say goodbye, you know? 